you Lord. Let us pray for those fathers who are struggling to balance the demands of work, marriage and children with an honest awareness of both joy and sacrifice. Let us praise those fathers who, lacking a good model for a father, have worked to become a worthy and virtuous father. Let us praise those fathers who, by their own account, were not always there for their children, but who continue to offer those children their grown, their love and their support. As well, let us pray for those fathers who have been wounded by words and actions of their children. Let us praise those fathers who, despite marital discord, have remained in their children's lives. Let us praise for those fathers whose children are adopted and whose love and support has nurtured in life. Let's praise those fathers who, as stepfathers, freely choose the obligation of fatherhood and earn their stepchildren's love and respect. Let us praise those fathers who have lost a child to death and continue to hold that child in their heart. Let us praise those men who have no children cherish the next generation as if they were their own. Let us praise those men who have fathered us in their role as mentors and guides. Let us praise those men who are about to become fathers. May they openly delight in their children. And let us in our memories and whose love continues to nurture us. As we reflect upon Father's Day, help us to remember that you are the Father of all fathers to all mankind. And so I say, thank you Lord. Amen. <coughs> so we're going to sing about God's love to each of us as we sing our next song, God's love to me.
After spending two days there, Jesus left and went to Galilee, for he himself had said, Prophets are not respected in their own country. When he arrived in Galilee, the people there welcomed him, because they had gone to the Passover festival in Jerusalem and had seen everything that he had done during the festival. Jesus went back to Cana in Galilee, where he had turned the water into wine. I'm 
government official was there whose son was sick in Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had come from Judea to Galilee, he went to him and asked him to go to Capernaum and heal his son who was about to die. None of you will ever believe unless you see miracles and wonders. Sir, come with me. Before my child dies, go. Your son will live. Jesus' words, and went. On his way home, his servants met him with the news. Jesus had told him. Your son will live. So he and all his family believed. This was the second miracle that Jesus performed after coming from Judea to Galilee.
Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which were not recorded in this book. But they were written that you and me may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. In our story today, we meet up with a noble a father who is concerned about the health of his son. He has heard about Jesus in his desperation and he asks Jesus for help. This is what he says. I don't know what other people are thinking or doing or what signs they are demanding. I just want my son to live. So will you come back to Capernaum with me to heal my child? Can you help me? My little boy is dying. He had probably ridden about 20 miles to meet Jesus across Galilee to find him. The first lesson we learn from this particular story is that we have a Father, a Heavenly Father, to whom we can bring all our concerns. I'm sure Billy in our story would have brought his concerns to Jesus on that day. Our Father went to the right source and believed what he had heard about Jesus. Rather than returning with this official, he tells him to return home. Your son will live. I wonder if you had been that father, what you would have thought. Did you feel that Jesus was letting him down? Jesus wouldn't come with him. He wanted Jesus to be present in this situation. He wanted Jesus to come. And Jesus was telling him to go. He hadn't grasped what Jesus was saying to him. When he said, go, your son will live. How can my son live if you are not there? Jesus was now asking this man to trust him with his situation. And fathers, there are many times that the Lord Jesus challenges you to trust him in the situations that you have to face, in the world you have to face today. And this man had to make a choice. Either he was going to return home and trust what Jesus had said, or stay there and continually plead for his son. He had to choose. He had to make the choice. And so this man takes Jesus at his word and returns home, believing that what Jesus had said, he would do. God has a wonderful way in bringing assurance to us in those particular times. I'm sure as this man returned home, he was probably in a bit of a quandary. Have I done the right thing? Men, have I done the right thing? Am I going to find my, my son still alive when I get home? How can Jesus work such a miracle without being there in his presence? This man, this nobleman, could have been in real torment about it all. For it does say that this man did believe as he returned. Knowing that Jesus is a healer, he trusted him, hoping that he would heal him. He says, instead of Jesus coming back with him, certainly implies that he felt a need to control the situation. However, being willing to walk away with only his word as a promise requires genuine biblical trust, which is what the scripture means when we read about faith. 
The assurance comes to this noble man in verse 51 when he says, While he was still on the way, his servants met him with the news that his boy was living. Can you imagine those words to that noble man after he got all this, these feelings going on inside of him? Is everything going to be okay? And to be assured, your son is well. The timing of this encounter shows that the man's request was already granted before he even knew it. This is a common aspect of our relationship with God, which is often overlooked. There are times for each of us when we cannot see the answers to our prayers. But that does not mean that God has not already answered them. In this case, the man travelled quite some way before getting that news. The servants refer to the moment of healing as yesterday. During that time, though he did not know it, God had already granted his request. Hallelujah. God may answer our prayers with not making us aware. The man's son was healed at the very moment that Jesus spoke, but he didn't find out about it until the next day. Simply because we haven't seen the proof of God's word does not mean he hasn't done anything. John 4, 53 says this, Then the father realised that this was the exact time that Jesus had said to him, Your son will live. So he and his old household believed. An interesting point. When the father realised the timing of the event, he and his own household believed. And I thought to myself, hadn't he believed before? It's one thing to believe that Jesus answers our prayers out of desperation, but it's a different matter to believe that he is the Lord of life and worthy of following and obeying him all the time. This meeting with Jesus was not a coincidence, but a God incidence. But not only was the Son blessed within him, the old household believed. We have no real way of knowing what happened to this noble man. But some Bible scholars feel that he is the man referred to in Acts chapter 13 when Luke recalls the call of Barnabas. Luke notes that among the leaders of the church in Antioch was a man named Manain who had been brought up with Herod the Tetrarch. It suggested that Manain could have been this desperate father who became a true believer in Jesus and who eventually became an important leader in the early church. How many of us times in our lives we need God to intervene? Even today we need divine intervention in today's family scene. As we remember as fathers today who signify really in our original story, we need them to be men that are good examples to those looking on. We need them to be men of faith who are guided each day by God's word and the instructions given. Who come to God on a daily basis, facing their families before him for whatever they need. It's a great responsibility. It's a God-given responsibility that he has placed upon their shoulders 
and we remember you all today. So I'd like all the men to stand. As we pray God's blessing of your lives. We pray for all the men here today who represent the men all around our world who have been given the responsibility of fatherhood in all its dimensions for today. We pray in their times of desperation they will be able to trust you. We pray that in their times of uncertainty they will know your assurance. We pray in their times of confusion they will know your wisdom. We pray in their times of doubt that they will be filled with your hope. But most of all, we pray that, the, that throughout their lives, they may know that you love them. Bless every father and every father figure with the best of your spiritual blessings today. Let them know that they are not alone in the tasks you have given them to provide for and support for those under their care, creating them a deep sense of trust in you, knowing that they can count on you to help them, lead them, and protect those dependent on them. Let them know every unselfish act of love and encouragement they have offered as of being given a gift that you receive gladly. When challenging times push them beyond their limits, assure them that they can take them further into the realm of possible impossibility. Today on this special day, and for all the days of their lives, fill them with the best of your blessings, so that one day, when they stand before you, they may hear your ultimate words Praise. Well done, my son. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So we sing our final song together. We give it more grace as our burdens grow greater. We send it for strength as our labours increase. To added afflictions, he added his mercy. To multiply trials. This is for you, right? He multiplies peace. Let's stand and sing the song right there.
and give it, and give it again. Let's pray. May the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your hearts to love. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet and may everyone you meet